Okay, is it working? Hey! <laughs> well, it seems like Dallas had a little eventful night last night. Okay, this is how I think it happened. Okay, the Dallas County siren system, it's got sirens all over the city and probably most of the county, are controlled by a radio signal and tones that either originate from the emergency operations center or the fire department. When they need to activate the tones, the emergency operations system or center or the fire department sends out a coded signal through radio and probably a repeater system that covers the entire county. On the sirens, there's an antenna and a radio and a data decoder that decodes the the, the data stream that's sent by the fire department or the e emergency operations center through the radio, through the repeater, to all the sirens. Okay, that's supposed to be in, encrypted or whatever. Okay, fine. But, see, they have to test these sirens, and in the Dallas area they test them at, what is it, the first Wednesday of every month? Anyway, to test them, they basically send the code through a radio to the repeater, to all the sirens, which go off for about three minutes. First they do the alert sirens, and then they, they do the warning. The alert's the steady tone. The warning is the wavering tone. All right. What has happened, apparently, on a test day, we have a unknown, quote, hacker. somewhere with a monitoring radio be it a scanner or what have you some sort of digital recorder it doesn't have to be digital it can be analog and a um, a cheap radio Probably bought off of eBay for less than thirty dollars. Okay, what happened on a f a Friday? My paper weights are having problems here. It's a little bit windy here, so excuse it. What happened on Wednesday is that the county EOC or the fire department. Wants to test the sirens. They use a data encoder and the radio. These radios go to the main repeater. The repeater has a very strong signal, or it had, probably has more than one repeater around the county, which goes to the sirens. They go, you know, for three minutes, whatever. What this unknown quote unquote hacker has done is monitor the test transmissions from either directly from the EOC. If um, if I would have done this quote unquote hack, it wouldn't be I wouldn't have monitored through the repeater. I would have monitored very close to the FD or the EOC on the reader repeater inputs frequency to get a clearer recorder recording of the uh, the, the tones with his uh, monitoring radio, which is tied into a um, analog or digital recorder. And then he could use that file with a computer or a phone to feed back at a later date, this time last night, at what, 11.42 Central Daylight Time? The files that he recorded through the, his uh, radio and recorder play back the recorded data through the quote unquote hackers radio which went to the county's repeater system and then to the sirens now they couldn't turn them off the reason is that um, 
I don't know if <laughs> they did they send um, in in the siren tones through the uh, data encoder. I don't know, but I tell you what the um, the unknown hacker didn't send the end of test cones. He just let them wail and repeated the, the signal over and over again. He could have had control of this, and he probably still does to this day. Now, back in the day before the radio links, um, outdoor warning systems were usually controlled by wireline, i.e. a telephone line leased through the telephone company, which is now the cable company for some reason. Um, but it was expensive and they were prone to damage and um, you know, they wouldn't have, uh, for example, there was a tornado over here and it tore out the wire lines before the EOC or the FD issued the warning through the wire line, the sirens wouldn't go off. They wanted, uh, they wanted to have something more fail safe. But doing so, they made it also prone to outside interference. Um, they can, they can, they can change the code and the unknown hacker wouldn't be able to do this. They'd have to change the codes for the data encoder and every siren that has a data decoder, they'd have to change a code or that. But then again, next month, they would have to test the system again. The unknown hacker would be able to use his monitoring radio and his recorder and his radio to get the new code. So, I don't know what to do in this situation. Other than, um, Dallas is going to have to spend a shitload of money on either encrypting the radio uh, signal between the encoders and the sirens. But it's still going to have a weak point. It's still going to have to use radio, which can be monitored and recorded and rebroadcasted at a later date. And, dude, the only thing I would say is it's going to take a million dollars to fix this. And it's not, not, it's not just Dallas's problem because this can be done anywhere that has a wireless... Uh, Activation for their sirens. Matter of fact, my first encounter was with a system like this would be the Berrien County um, um, outdoor siren system that surrounded the Donald C. Cook nuclear facility in Bridgman, Michigan, back in what was it, 1988? Um, and to my knowledge, there's um, Berrien still using the same tone as they did back in '88. So, people, that's how it's done, how to fix it. I don't think it can be completely stopped unless you, uh, it could be probably nicked in a bit, but if eBay and, uh, and Amazon would stop selling these radios, you can't do much about the recorder. But you, like I said, you can buy these radios on Amazon for less than $30 a pop. And that's how it happened.